Devil's Island is located just 8.5 miles off the coast of French Guiana in South America. The island's evocative name relates to its dark history as a terrible penal colony, when isolation, environment, and a harsh prison culture resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of inmates. Devil's Island, a tropical paradise surrounded by palm trees and waves, was part of a trio of penal islands used as France's offshore prisons for 101 years. Inmates endured harsh living conditions and working conditions. The islands, including Isle Royale and Isle Street Joseph, were controlled by Cayenne, the city's main jail. Devil's Island, the most isolated, housed the most troublesome inmates in solitary confinement cells. Despite being abandoned for over 70 years, the area's rich vegetation obscures the collapsing jail ruins. Before we proceed, kindly return the favor and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and activate the bell notification feature to stay up to speed with new video publications. So let's go on a historical tour to learn about the dark past of the penal colonies that once stood miles offshore in the merciless Atlantic Ocean, how so many people perished there and why it was so difficult to leave Devil's Island. Early in the 1500s, European settlers began to arrive in the region. It is believed that as many as 20,000 indigenous people lived along the coasts of what would later become French Guiana at the time that the Spanish arrived, and they encountered an indigenous population known as the Carib, who had been prospering in the region long before the arrival of the Europeans. In 1624, the French established a trading port in the village of Sinemary, which is still a small town with a population of about 3,000. In 1643, French colonists arrived. Despite both nations wanted it so strongly, life in the colony was difficult. The French retook the area in 1817, and by 1877, the colony had received representation in Parliament. Around 75% of colonists who attempted to inhabit the area are thought to have perished within the first year from tropical diseases to which their bodies lacked immunity. However, French prisoners were fighting for survival in a different area of the world while France strove to establish a prosperous colony in South America. In order to defend France's interests in the Mediterranean during the 1600s, numerous prisoners were made to work as oarsmen in the French galley fleet. The French galley cork had more than 50 ships at its peak, with over 15,000 men working on board, many of whom were French prisoners. Although the conditions on the galleys were difficult and the death rate for prisoners on board the ships was high, many people probably would have traded a life on the galleys for what they'd experience on Devil's Island. As the French Mediterranean fleet was decommissioned toward the end of the 17th century, the Confederation began to disband. A sizable portion did, however, return to ships, though not in the way you might anticipate. On abandoned ships, sometimes known as prison hulks, that were dispersed around French ports, a sizable number of convicts were chained up. The living conditions on board these prison hulks were, to put it mildly, appalling and due to neglect, they deteriorated over time and many of the ships eventually started to rot and sink. When this happened, the prisoners were hastily offloaded and transferred, either to temporary prisons on land or other hulks that were still standing. In the 18th century, prisoners in France faced harsh living conditions and demanding work schedules. They earned a small income but struggled financially. French Parliament passed legislation in 1832 requiring prisoners to receive basic necessities. However, few reforms were carried over to penal colonies. French authorities focused on penal colonies to relieve congestion and provide employment. Some prisoners were sent to far-off places like French Guiana and New Caledonia. They were often subjected to doublage, requiring them to work at the colony where they served their sentence. Following the 1851 coup d'etat led by Bonaparte, Napoleon IA decided to close all remaining prisons and transfer prisoners to distant penal colonies. French Guiana was chosen as the site, as an estimated 6,000 people were detained in the years following the revolution. Over 10,000 prisoners awaited transportation to these penal colonies. Devil's Island became Napoleon IA's preferred retreat for those opposing his rule. The first 3,000 detainees were civil law convicts sentenced under doublage or deportees convicted of political offenses. The penal colonies would accommodate around 80,000 prisoners, ranging from deadly murderers to small-time thieves. Female criminals were also transported to Devil's Island and other jails, but they provided no quarter to any prisoners. The French prison system, which included penal colonies on Devil's Island, Isle Royale, Isle Street Joseph, and Cayenne, faced harsh conditions and forced labor.
The island's climate was incredibly hot, with an average temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit and a significant increase to 90 degrees Fahrenheit during the sweltering months of September and October. Prisoners were forced to work hard all year long, laying stones and cutting down trees in the intense heat. The island's dearth of fresh water made fresh water a prisoner's worst enemy, leading to diseases like yellow fever, typhoid, and malaria. According to estimates, 33% of prisoners died while detained on Devil's Island, Isle Royale, and Isle Street Joseph. The death rate may have spiked to 75% during extreme overcrowding or bad illness epidemics. The penal colonies at Devil's Island expected hard labor, with many inmates accepting their fate and bracing themselves for a life of continuous agony. They worked on projects like Route Zero, a stone road, and were forced to work tirelessly, often without shoes or clothing. The cells on Devil Island, Isle Royale, and Isle Street Joseph were even worse, with prisoners sweating profusely and forbidden to talk, read, or lie down before nightfall. Devil's Island was a notorious penal colony where prisoners were housed in solitary confinement cells with lattice-like ceilings, making escaping nearly impossible. The prisons were subjected to harsh labor, living conditions, and diseases, with guards constantly monitoring and monitoring them. The French prison system allegedly outlawed corporal punishment, but due to Devil's Island's remote location, human rights violations were prevalent. Prisoners were subjected to whipping or beating, creating open sores that often developed into infections. Visitors were prohibited but occasionally allowed to send mail and gifts, which often became infected and cost the inmate their lives due to lack of medicine and clean water. Prison guards imposed a tax on all set money, with guards withholding 25% of money. Many prisoners hoped for a release from Devil's Island, but a statute passed in 1854 forced them to force residency at New Vienna after serving their terms. If their prison term was longer than eight years, they would be doomed to disease and poverty. Many prisoners never were released, leading to a rise in crime and other issues. Prisoner escapes from the French Guiana penal colonies were rare but did occur, with accounts of several escapees being documented. Rina Belbinot, a First World War veteran, was apprehended for thefts and sentenced to eight years of hard labor at Devil's Island. He tried to escape four times but was always caught and brought back to his cell. Henry Cherrier, another prisoner, chronicled his time at the penal colony in his best-selling book Papillon. Alfred Dreyfus, wrongly accused by Napoleon IAE of being a spy, was sent to Devil's Island to serve his time. He survived and was released after his family and friends in France established his innocence. The French government ended the practice of sending inmates to the penal colonies on June 17, 1938, but it took until 1953 for the final prisoner to be freed. The Salvation Army transported some prisoners back to France, but some chose to stay and live out their lives there. The French government built its space center in French Guiana in the 1960s, and in the 1980s, several of the prison structures were preserved as cultural historical monuments. Today, over 50,000 tourists visit Devil's Island, where over 80,000 inmates struggle to survive and as many as three quarters died while serving their sentences. And now, let us hear from you in the comment section below. Keep in mind that more videos will be up soon. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell in order to stay up to date with new video alerts. Also, sharing indicates you want to see our content reach a wider audience. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.